Hi, in this video we'll be discussing the, um, the use of push buttons and uh, matrix keypads on the Arduino. Uh, it's probably going to be a short video, but, um, but we'll cover the basics and then we can move on to the, uh, the current sensing and current limiting next video for the, uh, the power supply. And then we'll have almost a fully working power supply where we just got to tweak it and, and add our own little bells and whistles to it. Okay, so let's, uh, let's have a quick look at the bench. What we have running here is uh, a little demonstration. <coughs> now I'm using my Arduino Mega because the, uh, I think I popped the USB chip on the, uh, on the Nano down there. When I was setting this up, I um, <coughs> originally had this bit of plastic over and it's really hard to see the LCD for it. It's very dark. So I changed the resistor value and uh, I think I overloaded the, the 5 volt line on the USB. But anyway, so let's use the Mega for now. Okay, so I basically got the LCD demonstration there. I have five buttons hooked up. And uh, basically, these increment and decrement one, these increment and decrement uh, ten, and that just recess to zero. So, let's see. So basically, all I have to this doing is <coughs> there is a common wire. It's hard to tell on here, but there's a, f a common wire going to five volts, and then the signal wires all come out here. There's a, a pull down resistor, pull it down to ground. I use 10k resistors for that, <coughs> and then the signal wires also go into the Arduino. Now the Arduino is set to uh, Constantly check for uh, check for these values. Now, I'll explain the uh, the code I'm writing here. Now, what I've done is I've debounced the uh, the buttons. Um, basically, because it's reading the buttons really fast, and as you push a button. It isn't just a clean on off. Sometimes it's in between because of the uh, you know debris and variations on the buttons itself. So you may get like 20 key presses instead of just one. Now this little bit of code here will uh, will eliminate that. So how this works is the button gets red. So ignore the the other buttons first. It gets red. And then if the button is one, which means it's pushed, then it sets a flag to zero. Uh, it checks also checks if a flag is zero as well. Button set is zero. And if that's true, then what it does is it sets the flag to one and starts the, the counter going. And then it checks, is the button pressed one? And is the button set flag still one? If it is, it increments, increments the counter and then uh, checks. If the counter is above a certain limit, which is set in the code above, which I'll show you in a minute, then it will clear these states and allow the button to be pressed again. So if it checks and the button's not pressed, then it will clear the state. That way you can. Uh, press and hold the button once. See here's the button hold limit is there's 15 15,000 cycles of checking the buttons. <coughs> so this uh, this allows me to, to push it, hold it for a second or two and let go and it will just increment. But the uh, the counter that I've set here, the 15,000 cycles it checks it's <clears throat> it's so basically I can just hold the button and then it'll increment rather than just hold it and it'll just do nothing because before if I was to hold it it would just be do -do 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 really fast you push and let go really fast and it would uh, 
and it would count several hundred at a time rather than individually. So that's how, uh, how those buttons are working. Okay, here we have the uh, quick schematic of the, the normally open push button, how it connects to the Arduino. Now the one end of the push button will go to VCC, which is usually 5 volts, sometimes it can be 3.3, it doesn't matter, it still works in this case. And then the other end will go to the digital input, in this case it will be on the Arduino. Now the 10k resistor pulls it down to ground. Now the reason for that being is if the button is not pushed, then it defaults to the ground because uh, it's, it's, it's a weak pull down. Now alternatively you could have the button uh, connecting to, to ground and the resistor go pulling up to the uh, VCC so it'll default to the, the, the you know the logic one but in this case we're using the default of logic zero okay. so that's the, uh, the push button. I've now modified the code to use a, a matrix keypad now, uh, as you can see here, I've added four diodes, which I'll explain uh, what that's for in a minute. And I've connected them to the uh, to here. Now, basically, what this does is this is output. It uh, selects the columns on here through the diodes. Now, the reason for the diodes is to stop it cross talking backwards when you hold a button down because uh, if you, you hold multiple buttons down it will get confused and also if you use the diode you can also use it w uh, on the data lines of the uh, of the LCD for instance I haven't done that here but you can do as long as you um, do it on so there's four data lines coming out for this you can multiplex it you can sorry you can you can use it on the same lines to check the, uh, the rows or the columns or whatever, the output from there, through the diodes, that way it doesn't interfere with the screen. Now as long as you're reading this when the display is not being updated, or you're writing to the display when you're not reading from this, then uh, it should be a problem. Here we have a uh, layout of how the, the matrix keypad is connected. <coughs> Now this could be rotated if you uh, if you prefer to scan the rows instead of the columns or the columns instead of the rows, whichever. But the way it is right now, it's scanning the columns and it's reading out the rows. Um, so basically, what the uh, <coughs> the Arduino will do is it will it will select which row to uh, to read from, and then the columns go into the digital inputs, and then you can read which of the uh, the columns have actually been used, which we'll see in the next picture. Now in this picture, we'll see the matrix. You'll see that the third button on the top row has been pressed, and currently the Arduino has selected none of the lines in the... Uh, <coughs> hasn't selected any of the rows to check. So obviously all the columns will read out zeros at the top because it defaults because of the, uh, the 10k resistor. Now here the Arduino has selected the, uh, the top row and as you can see <coughs> if you look at where the columns have been read back the, um, the one pressed has gone high in correspondence to the, uh, the where, where it is in the position in the, in the row. Now the Arduino will next scan the next, uh, next row and um, <coughs> because there's no buttons pushed you see all the columns will all be selected as zero. It will read this then it will move on to the next the next row. And again being on the next row the button no button is pushed on this row so therefore the the outputs again will be all zero. Okay now we finally make it to the uh, the final row and like the last two there was no buttons pushed on this row so it will also give out zero and then in the next cycle it will just return back to the top row and it will keep going through and uh, scanning and that's how it will check 
if there's a button pressed on any of the Okay, rows. but let's have a look at the code. <clears throat> now, I didn't take time to double check the, uh, the row and the column numbers. This is just a quick demonstration, but uh, it can be easily done. Well, I made sure I set the rows for the inputs and the columns for the outputs. And then basically what you do is you uh, you turn on one row pin and turn the others off and then you read sorry turn on one column pin and turn all the other column pins off and then you read each individual row pins one at a time and if it happens to match then you set a value now I usually use a, um, a two-dimensional array to, to hold the values for this but this is just a, uh, a quick demonstration. And I basically use the same code as before. Basically, whatever's there is displayed. <coughs> now, this has been set so when there's no buttons pressed, it'll be a zero. So, so I'm just going to push some buttons here. I'm going to hold them down. One, two, Now, if you hold multiple ones down, in the code, it's it's set so it will uh, it'll prioritize the, the highest numbered button. So, so, if you hold multiple ones down, the highest numbered one there it will use. Now, you can write the code if you good at the code and you can write it so it'll give you a bit of out but that could be a lot of a uh, lot of numbers to handle I've done it before it's uh, it's quite an interesting problem to work with but yeah this is the so this is the matrix keypad you can usually you can buy um, little telephone number pads on eBay quite cheaply and, uh, and the one I shown in the other video which for some reason I can't seem to find it I was going to use it in this demonstration but uh, that's also a 4x4 the numeric keypad ones you can get on eBay they're usually a 3x4 but it's good enough for, uh, for entering voltages on a power supply I've used them actually in the industry myself um, with no problem but yeah but, so yeah this has been a uh, a quick example of using the uh, the buttons and keypads in the, on the Arduino okay I'll probably add some more information to this video as well but, but for now that's that's the demonstration hi uh, thanks for watching the video I uh, hope this information is useful uh, sorry it's uh, it's a bit short but the uh, you know you can either go briefly on the topic or you can go whole in and let's spend several hours describing it so but if there's more call for more in-depth information i will uh, i'll gladly provide another video but uh but yeah so thanks for watching uh, and i'll see you next time goodbye